Everybody likes their own flavor, but here's what I'm gonna say, okay? If, you, if I had to choose one genre of ride on the Peloton to keep, it would be 30 to 45 minutes Sam Yo Hidden Hills rides. Perfect rides as far as I'm concerned. Like, it's like clockwork, man. A human trapped in the shackles of the past. 80 to 100 low resistance warm up, 70 to 90 high resistance jog warm up, six minutes of building a hill, six minutes of practicing hit, 15 to 20 minute hidden hills finisher. Ooh! I always want technique. Unlike Eric B and Rakim, Rakim, I do sweat the technique. I would also like to obtain some rare ergo. Kate, how far how far back am I of you right now? Be honest. They should have adults only Peloton rides. Honestly, I would love like a kids only Peloton ride because I would come in first place easily, easily. That's like me when I when I jump into the thirty minute postnatal ride. I'm like, oh wow, wow, a hundred and one output in thirty minutes. Vroom, 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 vroom. How's that C-section scar? <laughs> so I am, I am indeed riding unpadded for, for two hours, but I will say DL Guiga for the last week, I've only been riding an hour and a half because I've been burning the candle at both ends. But my wife texted, uh, tested negative today second negative test in the last three days with zero positives, which means I'm so back. My life may temporarily be returning to normal until some other unforeseeable controversy, or not controversy, but catastrophe strikes. But yeah, I'm raw dog in the saddle. But like, why? I, I, I built up a adamantium ass. Like, why wouldn't I raw dog the saddle? It doesn't hurt. No, I mean, I got underwear on, but I don't, I don't have like a padded seat or padded shorts or anything like that. I just built up the damn sit bones. What did you use? It took a couple months. Oh, I saw you go into the yeah, 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 let me guess, Miyazaki, Miyazaki door. Using the chamois butter? I am, I am indeed using the chamois butter. What are your thoughts on bringing back plastic straws? I'm for it. I haven't done any research into how harmful they are for the environment, but I, I would say I'm probably for it. Or, I mean, I'm, I would be pro paper straws if they just weren't so ass. And, I, you know, I generally have a decent amount of faith in, like, the manufacturing capabilities of society. I don't think it's like they're holding back on a good paper straw. I think that this is the, the best they get for right now. And it's simply not getting the job done. As a result, maybe maybe the technology's not there yet. Yum. If we wait until it's good enough, it'll be too late for the planet. We're not doing the plastic straws thing for the planet, right? Like, that one's for the turtles. I'm not anti-turtle. I'm just saying, it's not like the plastic straws are releasing, like, gigatons of CO2 into the atmosphere. Let's not conflate two situations here. Like, I'm, 
I'll have a slightly worse straw and feel good about it because I'm doing something good for the turtles. I don't want to see a turtle die just because I wanted to have a nice little cold brew or something like that, but... Almond straws, though? Yeah, but then almonds use a thousand liters of water to produce, like, a single almond, bro. Oh. <laughs> I deserve that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought I could skirt along the side. Oh. Come on. Come on. You hear the steppers, man? It's crazy. Oh my god! Come on, man! Make sure you don't Google how many uh, gallons of water it takes to make a pound of beef. Bro, the cows are making the beef. Take it up with them. Also, I don't really eat beef. I'll have you know we got Indian food last night. And... Can I say that I'm the most moral man of all time? Two vegetarian dishes, two meat dishes. For four adults. 15 years ago, that would have been four meat dishes, okay? I, if it was just me, I could have easily gone four vegetarian dishes. Careful, he's a hero. You get some paneer. No, it was, we were paneerless. We got we got a chana masala. What have I done? Um, an alu gobi. Delicious. My daughter ate two pieces of naan bread for dinner and then a scoop of ice cream. So. I'd say nutritionally, we pretty much got this thing on lock right now. Based. <laughs> Blind? Where, where am I going? Up the stairs, okay. Yeah, I was vegetarian for a bit. I know I, I keep saying it. Oh, up these stairs. It's not to put any pressure on Kate. It's merely to keep it in the frame of reference. If at any point... Kate said, let's go vegetarian. We could, we could spool that up in... Um, one grocery store trip, essentially. But she's the, she's the meat eater. Going vegetarian for me would be re relatively frictionless. Much like my thighs after I put the chamois butter on. Motivity crank, huh? Can't quit the sushi. Hey, brother, you said it, not me. <laughs> Almost every vegetarian has anemia. Source, dude, just trust me. Me when I'm trying to justify my 20-piece chicken nugget habit. I just want to see a ladder so I don't have to deal with the ranged Andes. Get altered. I can't see your health bar. I'm okay. Bro, I can't see! Get on. I own you. Patience amulet, we take those. Oh! <laughs> Whatever, we got him. We blew him up. Vegetarians are the centrists of dining. Prove me wrong. 
You guys are like, take it from me. You're too judgmental. Who cares? Unless they're, they're, you know, in your face forcing you to become a vegetarian. But like, that's... It's like a very 2010 take. It's like, people hate vegans because like, uh, oh, they're so militant. Like, most of the time, when I was a vegetarian, you, the, the perception is that you would get annoyed by vegans being like, why don't you take it a step further? It was way more annoying to be like, oh, I'm vegetarian right now, I'm not eating meat, and then people would immediately take it as like an assault on their identity. They would be like, for every hamburger you don't eat, I'm gonna eat two. And you're like, okay, brother, fucking go see if I care. Most of the time, people are just out here like minding their own business. You're like, fine, I'll never tell you a, a, an intimate piece of information about myself ever again, because you're, you're, too, you're too rude about it. Hey, Deli Sarah, thanks for the, the gifted subscriptions, thank you. Oh yeah, it's true, so, I mean, to be fair, it's not just a vegetarian thing. I'm sure if you tell people you're on keto or intermittent fasting or something like that, they probably get a little anal about it. Or annoying sometimes. I mean, it's like the same thing. Like, if, you, if you're if you a vegetarian and you get annoyed by people being like, well, my lunch eats your lunch for lunch, then just imagine that you're bald. Because it's basically the same sort of uh, experience. Just hearing the same bad jokes over and over again for your entire life. And then imagine being a bald vegetarian, dude. Quartz. Quartz is good. It's true. It's true. Being bald is like every day is April Fool's. You gotta go first. The reason I don't eat beef, though, is not environmental. I've said it before. Shit just got, like, too expensive. Stupid. <laughs> I enjoy a steak as much as the next guy, but... Uh, God, just got too expensive, man. What about salmon? Salmon, also like real expensive. But my parents are here, so they've been buying our salmon. That's another great thing about uh, going vegetarian. Chickpeas are cheap as hell, man. It's like one of the cheapest foods you can get. Still costs more than it used to. Hang on. Amulets. Oops. Emulate of patience increases stamina recovery speed, huh? My most toxic vegetarian trait, though, is that I don't really like tofu. There's some forms of it that I enjoy, and I've eaten a lot of it in my life, but it's just not my... It's, it's not my favorite, let's put it that way. I like it okay. Kate, I like uh, like Dubu Choli, but apart from that, I'm like, eh. I like, yeah, exactly. I just like vegetables, man. Just relax here. You just can you just chill out with all this stuff breaking? Hello, Simbicta. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Hello, Simbicta. Oh, a bear trap again? sort of thing is in my bag, baby. How do you feel about meat getting subsidized? Listen, it's not a popular take, and I don't think it, it should be a popular take. I'm blessed to be in this position. 
I have opinions, but like as time goes on, I have less and less of them. I don't know, man. Uh, it's not my area of expertise. I don't have... I don't know about the inputs. I don't know about the outputs. I don't know about the incentives. You take the subsidies away, you know, 250,000 farmers immediately are out of a job. That's a lot weighing on your conscience as well. I don't know. It's hard. I, I, I can't weigh in on that. Hey, Mad Dog Nation, thanks for the gifted subscriptions, by the way. Thank you. But I will say, farmers should be allowed on airplanes. In my opinion. Sorry if this offends you. Holy cow. You gotta admit, that was sick. <clears throat> Don't, not with the announcement again, please. Not with the bear trap again. Hey, 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 you relax. This is where we normally come in. Come around here. Tom Petty voice. Please come around here some more. I can't believe it. We can't. We, there's no other way. We have to fix the timeline. perfect time to have an umbrella. You're not wrong. He's not really using it, though. I'm sorry to say this, by the way, as long as I'm making enemies. I feel like I need Justin to be here to back me up, and I need Apollo not to be here, or he'll, he'll be very upset with this. I'm not a Tom Petty guy. Bad take. I'm like, there's a couple Tom Petty songs I don't mind. Like, um, I think American Girl is a, is, is a little bit of a bop. It's kind of like the first White Stripes song ever made in many ways. Maybe, maybe I do like Tom Petty, I just don't like Free Fallin'. Maybe that's it. Maybe I'm just sick of Free Fallin'. What else is he get? He's got Running Down a Dream. I would give that a two and a half out of five, not to be rude. That's a reasonable review. I mean, in many ways, I'm like the Robert Chris Gow of music. American Girl's like a four. Is he saying you don't have to live like a refugee? Don't have to live like a refugee? He does? I don't know. That's like a... That's like a two. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and just for me, just in my head, that's like a two. You can enjoy it however much you enjoy it. But maybe it's because I didn't grow up strong or grow up right with those Indiana girls on those Indiana nights. It's crazy how, like... Uh, an Indiana night when Tom Petty was making music probably was a little bit more noteworthy. 2023, an Indiana night is a trip to the gas station. Put on your nice college football gear, sorry. And then, you know, 
three hours of watching whatever is good on the Roku channel. No disrespect to Indiana or whatever. Indiana. Maybe Indiana. Oh, it's Riddle Guy. I stand tall and proud. Candle, candle! A bold constrictor who finished digesting! <laughs> Trinity key. We need to go back to the church to use the Trinity key, right? Lucky that my stance is small and humble. So true. So you don't confuse them with mountains. Shalom, lale, lale. I should have just opened this, huh? What the hell is Shakira talking about, man? Lucky that my breaths are small and humble, so you don't confuse them with mountains. She's just spitting? What the hell is she, was she talking about when she said waka waka this one for Africa, bro? She's not on... 12 Vicodin smoking that Scooby-Doo dick, okay? I understand the reference. Do not make this jump yet. Also, I know we've said this before. I still don't understand. <laughs> Your taxes paying ass wouldn't understand. <laughs> plus two, plus two. Um, Because she isn't being investigated for that, but anyway. Um, I allegedly, allegedly. Shot put? Boy, I sure hope it did. Um, what the hell happened in 2010 with the World Cup? I thought that it was, um, I thought that it was waving flag. K-9 waving flag. I thought Canada was going to get its chance on the world stage to make its media presence felt. And instead, all of a sudden, it becomes, uh, Shakira's bop. Waka waka, this time for Africa. That was the World Cup with the Vuvuzelas, yes. It was indeed. Best World Cup? I don't know. Um, I think I have fond memories. You got me, kid. I have fond memories of the 2002 World Cup because I was in eighth grade and it was the summer, so like... The World Cup starts in like June or something like that. We watched the games in our computer lab. Our, our eighth grade teacher was basically like, listen, you're all going to high school next year. It's freaking June or whatever. Like, you don't need to do any work. So all we did was watch the World Cup. I also feel like that was a great World Cup as someone who doesn't follow soccer because there were like more upsets than there have ever been in World Cup history due to... Uh, very suspicious <laughs> referee. The host did very well. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Twenty ten was pretty good. I don't remember much of it. I definitely remember I went to Las Vegas with my parents while it was going on. And I placed a bet on the Spain-Portugal game. And uh, it was a $40 bet on Portugal to win. Smartest sports gambler of all time. You were in 8th grade? No, in 2010, I had just graduated from university. I mean, 2006 uh, is a noteworthy one as well. Watching the World Cup final and watching Zinedine Zidane headbutt that guy.
That was wild. He didn't kill him. Doesn't that make you like 35? World's most, most arithmetic inclined Twitch chatter. It does make me like 35. In fact, I would say I'm almost the most like 35 you can actually be. I'm 34 and I turn 35 in like almost exactly two months. The mathematics are correct every time. You're a Sagittarius? Oh boy. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I am a Sagittarius, yeah? I am. How are you younger than Germa? I was born uh, after. I was born after him. Oh. They love to open doors like that in this game. How does being old feel? I, here's one thing I would say. Being old allows you to have a long-term uh, time horizon for your thoughts and the consequences of them. So you don't understand that you, as like a 28-year-old, when you're saying 35 is old, like in seven years, your ass is like 98% likely to still be alive. And then you're going to have to deal with the fact that you called a 35-year-old old and thus you'll now think of yourself as old. So it really serves you poorly to poke fun at someone for something that you are probably going to experience yourself, if you're lucky. The alternative is, is worse, for sure. Sanus camera. Silence, I own you. Also, I would say like pretty much, I mean, you can say this is cope if you want, but I'm living it and you're just, you know, shit posting about it online. Other people in their 30s may feel different or they may feel the same. Feel free to chime in. It definitely feels better to be, for me, in my 30s than in my 20s. You don't really start the decaying process for a little while, I think. Like, you're decaying a little bit, but, like, it's not like we... Uh, listen, uh, without being insanely rude, a lot of the people right now that are, like, old ass, like, your, your body's decaying, I'm like, brother, you're 26, what's your excuse? Like, look at your profile photo, okay? Like, it's... You can still, in your 30s, you can make up for the fact you're getting a little bit more drag, but you can just crank up the engines a little bit and stay relatively homeostatic, you know? Unless you're a professional athlete, it's not really like an enormous problem. Like I'd probably, I would be past my peak in the NFL right now for sure, but we ain't in the NFL. You know, the average person my age does like eight minutes of cardiovascular exercise a day. It's not that hard to peak in your 30s versus you know, in your 20s, in my opinion. Is it, in your 30s, you have a little bit more of an uphill battle, but it's not that much. And in your 20s, everything's going right, but most people just can't seem to put it together, myself included. Like instead of, like you, you could, hang on, where, where's the shortcut by the way? You could be in the best shape of your life at 25 if you wanted to be. But instead of doing like 30 minutes of cardiovascular exercise, you're like, maybe I'll just play two more games of League of Legends, you know? When you're in your 30s, it becomes easier to, in my opinion at least, in my experience, it becomes easier to prioritize the stuff in your life that you think will actually matter. Because I think you, you get rid of the cope that's like, Psh, I'm just not gonna, I'm gonna be the first dude ever that like, just from pure luck, doesn't actually experience the negative effects of aging. At some point, you just reach an age where you're like, that shit is gonna happen to me. And you either make a choice, like, are we, are we going out, you know, the, in, a, in a graceful way, or are we going out in a ball of a blaze of glory? 
I'd rather go out as a graceful Andy. So you kind of, you know, you learn to accept reality on its own terms instead of delusionally. Hang on, I'm gonna heal again. <clears throat> hang on, hang on. Before I fight this guy. This one's going to feel good. Mad Andes when they're in the on-ban requests. It was just a joke. There's no audit coming anymore. There's no... You listen, I'm 34 now. We don't need to do an audit. We'll just send you to the chokey like Mitz Trunchbull. You can audit yourself. What did he say? Okay, well, here's what he said. It was, it was the thing that everybody's been getting banned for lately. It was a bad faith, open quotation mark of something that I didn't say. They said, I have a 25 hour, open quote, I have a 25 hour work week and I work out a little bit. You guys are big losers. That's not what I said. First off, last week I think I only worked for like 20 hours. Secondly, on top of that, I didn't call anybody a loser. I just said like, my ass is less of a loser in my mid-30s than I was in my mid-20s. Because your brain gets better, or at least mine did. Obviously it didn't work for everybody. But they might be 19, I don't know. Did they get timed out or banned? That's a perma. But a perma is really just a timeout you have to apologize for. If you go into the on-ban request and you say, sorry, that was over the line, it takes swallowing your pride a little bit, and that's not an easy thing for everyone to do, myself included, then you get on-banned. Just a little bit of a pet peeve, you know? When I'm trying to have like a mature conversation and, and people are poisoning the, the well by hitting you with like green text arrows, I'm like, I get it. The last 500 people you talked to were all on like a 4chan. But like, we're trying to talk to like human beings here, okay? Trying to have a little bit of like mutual respect for each other. Jeff O'Neill blocked me on Twitter and I've never recovered. I love blocking people. It's, it, it honestly owns. It feels amazing. I, this is you, if this if you're here, I apologize, okay? But it's I tweeted. I think it was yesterday. I tweeted, "I'm going to be an hour late today. Sorry." Someone replied. It wasn't even rude, really. They just said, "Enjoy your one hour of Canada Day." <laughs> block. Look up the username. Unblock mute. They're a shadow to me now. They're ether. They're a ghost. Now, why would you do that? You gotta put yourself, you gotta understand that there's two parties in each bit of communication, okay? There's the person replying and there's the person receiving the reply. I, as the person receiving the reply, regardless of the intention of the person who said it, my wife's been sick for six days. I've been sleeping on the couch. I've been sleeping on the hardwood floor in my daughter's room. I've, my work week has become compressed like a diamond as soon as my work day is over, I pick up my daughter from daycare. I'm on childcare duty for the rest of the night. Sometimes that ends at 10 p.m. Sometimes that ends at 3 a.m. I'm waking up at 5.20 in the morning, going for uh, you know, uh, 90 minutes of exercise to clear my head, hopping in the shower, making her breakfast, packing her lunch, driving her to daycare. So you can understand how I might find that a little bit resentful when someone says, enjoy your one hour vacation, even if they were joking. You don't get to control for the person that you're replying to and how they're going to take it, which is why when you don't have comfort and rapport with the person, you should be a little bit like cautious about the way that you phrase things. Because you don't, you know, if Malf hit me with enjoy your one hour of Canada day, we'd have a little bit of banter. But like I went to school with this guy for 10 years. I know he's not coming from a mean spirited standpoint. gets bloated.
should have saved it for Twitch chat. Well, in Twitch chat, there's just too much of that sentiment to efficiently, you know, ban. ban. So you're pretty. You, there's safety in numbers. But on Twitter, if there, if it's just a one tap, your ass is grass. <laughs> It's like if they can't stop us all. If we Naruto run, we can dodge the bullets. Also, like, is, is it fair? It's honestly not fair, but like, it's the way it goes sometimes. You know, if you gotta go pee in public, you sneak around to like an alley, you pee, maybe you get away with it. Maybe your friend says, wait, I gotta go pee. I'm gonna pull out my you know what and pee. All of a sudden, woo, woo. But my friend just did it. Why am I getting a ticket for it? Well, I didn't see your friend do it. You both did something wrong. You just happened to pay the price. You're right, guy. You should have been timed out a long time ago. I don't know. I don't know what's keeping you around. I don't. You know, that's what I'm saying. It's unfair. Sometimes you just get lucky. It's probably this way, right? No, no, no. It's probably this way. It's probably that way. Yeah. Nope, not this way. This is the <laughs> this is the wrong way. Up the first set of stairs. What the hell is the first set? You can be toxic, by the way. You just have to be funny. A lot of people, you know, you think you're him and you're not him. Looking good. Oh! Who'd have thought we'd make it this far? You can These be like really rude as long as you're hilarious. Hey, everything went smooth as silk. And you know me. But if you're like 3 out of 10 funny and 5 out of 10 toxic, that puts you in the block zone. I'm sorry. But there's people who have me blocked on Twitter too. Sometimes you'll be like, what the heck did I do to, you know, former Jeopardy winners? People are all dunking on a tweet in the quote tweets. And it's like this person, you can't see this person's reply because they limit the amount of people that can read it. And you're like, well, I guess they fucking hate my ass, but it's honestly none of my business. <laughs> It hurts, I guess. You're like, what, what do you say fuck me for? But, you know, it's their, uh, it's their social media platform, man. Or their little corner of it, at least. Wednesday? Bucket head, the Undertaker. Oh, the coffin's for me. <laughs> POV, you are a streamer who just turned 30. Eldest of the Black Rabbit Brotherhood. Okay. That was a good attack. You got me good with that one? Okay. Well. One is all he gets. So close. <laughs> Hey, we started with a limited amount of uh, Estus that time, because I keep fighting this dude for no reason. Ten is all the flames get? Dude, that's what I'm hey, saying. What's the big idea leaving us behind? Oh, I knew we shouldn't trust him. Let's get out of here and get those lousy bums to business. Nobody scores 11 goals on the Vancouver Canucks. Bring it on. 
You ain't seen nothing like my brother. <laughs> oh man. This is the run. Half the rosters do? No, we the the Canucks joke is we usually lose like five to two. That's still really bad to consistently lose five to two. Ten zero hopefully is a bit of an aberration though. Three two then two empty netters. Oi, with the, the classic is after the opposing team scores an empty net goal, the Canucks score two quick ones to only lose by one. I thought I had that last one. I'll make sure your I did see the, that continuum on r slash uh, hockey that was like, how NHL fans feel about their team's prospects this year. Not prospects like young players, but their, their odds of doing well. And the Canucks were like right in the middle of good and bad expectations and pretty much right in the middle between nervous and excited. I'm gonna tell you, this is just one fan's opinion. You shouldn't necessarily put um, any more onus on this than the wisdom of crowds, but I think we are gonna be pure ass. I think we will be in the bottom eight in the league, is my two cents. I, we, we did poorly last year, and not enough has changed. No, but last year we had injuries. This year everyone will certainly be healthy the whole season. We'll, no team has that. Yeah, but we had the most man games lost to injury next to Montreal last year. I'm telling you, every year, there's a new excuse, man. I'm not saying they should make the playoffs every time. Obviously, that's not realistic. But every year is like, yeah, last year we were bad. But this year... Would have been nice to get Bedard. It's true. I mean, we like... Um, the Canucks have had pretty poor draft luck or draft lottery luck. They've had pretty good drafting, at least in the, the late 2010s. I don't know about uh, Lekaramaki and Pod Colson. But I think we will still be fucking suck this year. It's okay. We could just, you know... Watch the games and have some fun. It's been a while since I put anyone six feet. This guy's pretty strong, huh? Rest in peace. I guess we could um, just run away from his attack. That's one thing. I'm not going to bite my controller. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, if we do really well, I'm like, I'll be pleasantly surprised. Don't get me wrong. But no, I was... I'm, I'm thrilled to not have quarter season tickets this year. You made me read a Germa joke? God Bring damn it. It's not that I don't respect Germa. It's that I respect him so much, I don't want to steal his bits. <laughs> Glunky? Couple glunkies for you? Spacing. Not every block not every boss is a block Andy. Some of them are spacing Andy's. That's what we in the business call 
the benefit of practice. Run. What the hell? No, no. Okay. Well, that's that's gonna be tough. <laughs> that's gonna make it tougher for sure. <laughs> <clears throat> you a bacon or a breakfast sausage sort of guy? Honestly, it's taken me a long time to get to this point. I think I'm in a phase right now where when I go out for breakfast, I am not a, um, I'm not a, a classic breakfast sort of guy anymore. Two slices of toast, two eggs, any style, two pieces of breakfast-based meat, and uh, some breakfast potatoes. So I just, I, I get annoyed predominantly with the breakfast meat. I think the flavor of bacon is better than the flavor of breakfast sausage, but two slices of bacon is not enough to sate my, my desire for meat at a breakfast. So I order the sausage, and then I'm like, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I'm insulted by the sausage but when I'm or disappointed but when I'm eating it I'm like oh man I really wish like this sausage tasted like bacon so instead when we go out for brunch it'll blow you away rather than a classic breakfast find myself getting a chopped salad or something like that I dislike you more now has no impact on you. It's, uh, I mean, that's between you and your psyche. I could go for some lox as well, some smoked salmon. It's not about health. I'm just saying, like, whenever I... That, it's like whenever I'm eating a traditional breakfast, I'm kind of like... Uh, I'm, I'm evaluating it versus the counterfactuals. And I'm like, the counterfactual is I could have more meat right now, but I don't. When I'm eating a chopped salad, I'm always like, this chopped salad is pretty damn good. I'm, look at the parry spam, bro. <laughs> Run. Okay, you got me. <clears throat> Do like some salmon at brunch, yeah? I like a breakfast sandwich. I don't think I've ever thought this is damn good while eating a salad. You might be stuck in 1990s saladdom. You might be stuck in iceberg lettuce, slices of cucumber, two red radishes and julienne carrots. You might be back there. There's some seriously good salads these days. They've, they've done a lot with salad technology. Bring it on. I mean, even just the Caesar goes crazy. I got caught admiring myself. I was admiring my performance in those blocks. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> what salads do you make at home though? I mean, when I was eating salad for lunch regularly, I would just get like a bagged salad mix from Costco. And then I got this thing called Salad Topper. It comes like a one kilogram bag full of crunchy detritus. You just throw a handful of that on top, hit it with some like salad dressing and you're good to go. It's crunchy detritus. It's got seeds and dried berries and stuff like that. I mean, listen, you can have a problem with that salad, but if you're making yourself like a, a turkey sandwich on Dempster's bread, you ain't got a leg to stand on, okay? Burp. 
bird food. Honestly, you guys, you got a weird connection with salads. When I eat a salad, I'm not in the restaurant waiting for everyone to give me a standing ovation. I'm not waiting for people to say, oh my God, did you see that that middle-aged man ordered a salad? He's like God's strongest soldier. I just want a salad. I don't know if we, we Kate, you, we, we eat one-on-one -on -one all the time. Sometimes Kate will be like, I'll have the, the pub burger, please. And I'll say, hey, can I have like the chopped salad? I don't think Kate has ever once replied like, oh, so you think you're better than me? It's just food. It's just, you got to stop. They, he will not divide us, okay? You got to stop looking for reasons to hate people. There's enough that you can find that are legitimate. You don't need to make up your own ones with artifice. Bring it on. You ain't seen nothing like my brother. I never thought that. The only time I think I'm better than someone at a restaurant is when they order something that's already for kids, like a hamburger, and then they make a substitution that's crazy. Like, can I get that with no lettuce, onion, or tomatoes? Then I'm like, well, I think I'm better than this guy. <laughs> But if my, if my dining partner got a chicken and corn chowder with a ciabatta bun or something like that, and I got the, I got the chopped salad with an added chicken breast, I'm not like, uh, well, you know, I, I consider us equals. I'm big like that. Excuse me? Spicy food enjoyer? Yeah, 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 I like, I like spicy food. I like it. I'm not a Hot Ones type spicy, but I'm, um, I, mean, well, I mean, let me put it this way. If I order Indian food, I'm getting a medium. I used to get a Vindaloo hot, and then it just, it got to the point gastrointestinally where I, I was, I was facing mild retribution the next day and I said I'm not gonna wait for that to get to medium retribution so I took it down to a medium my mouth can handle hotter foods but unless it's the most amazing food I've ever tasted it doesn't uh, the juice ain't worth the squeeze on the on the commode the next day but that's just for me personally Bring it on. You ain't seen nothing like my brother. Crazy you haven't brought back the tacky since Tales of Iron. You must be an amnesiac, you forgot I'm him. Uh, I, I've only eaten the tackies that one time in my entire life. And the reason is because they were the best chip I've ever eaten. And the nutritional information is just god awful. So I, I had to stop. Otherwise, it could easily become a problem. Get me out of here. Get me out of here! I'm, I'm not gonna hold you. I, I don't even know what's happening. Back step of the century. Oh! <laughs> yeah, should have seen that one coming. That's tough. That's tough. I mean, the tackies were like the greatest, possibly the, the most flavorful food I've ever eaten in my entire life. Motherfuckers from Ohio be like, oh, you've never had pho then. Go ahead, say it. Go ahead, say it, I'm waiting. I mean, have you? Yeah, it's pretty good.
Bring it on. You ain't seen nothing like my brother. This guy thinks he's Leatherface. That's so cute. Nothing hits like a failed Estus. Oh! <laughs> Strong guy for sure. Did you see the Vancouver Reddit post about the rising cost of pho? Listen, I don't think I did a good job of articulating it yesterday, okay? My bit about restaurants was not meant to be like, oh, the diner should never feel bad that, or like be upset that dining out is more expensive, which I think is how that could have come across. All I was trying to get across is I'm starting to get annoyed with like the, has anyone realized how expensive blank is these days? Who do these restaurants think we are? And then it's like, well, everything's more expensive now. Like, obviously, there's some things that have gone up, you know, 40% in two years or something like that. But when the FUD goes from like 11.99 to 13.99, I'm like, I think they're just trying to, you know, the rising cost of semolina flowers has impacted their business. I'm not gonna put that one on, you know, on and chi or whatever. Oh, I haven't earned it yet. I never, and I never freaking will. And I never freaking will. This dude's allergic to trying new weapons. Honestly, it's not a chat thing. It's simply a, um, it's an Andy thing. A lot of Andys, they uh, fail to block seven attacks in a row, hit one time, and then they go, oh, I gotta change my weapon. You know, you gotta you gotta learn the boss's pattern before you start. It's like when you're using the microscope. You start with the coarse adjustment knob. If if the shit's blurry as fuck, you don't immediately go. Oh, I'm gonna tighten this up on the little Andy here. You know, you don't have to bust that out. All you gotta do is you you start on the big Andy until you can sort of see it. Then you go to the little Andy. Bring it on. You ain't seen I'll start to worry about min max and the weapon types once I get more than one hit in per attempt. <laughs> oh, man. Conspiracy theory, lies of P, that little part of your health bar that looks like you have one HP is actually like 10% of your health bar. I think they love that moment where you're like, oh, I'm one tapped. Game designers be like, so true. Game designers be like, oh no, they found out that it's not actually raining throughout the entire level. There's just a little box around the player. Bring it on. You ain't seen nothing like my brother. I lived. No! It took, it took like three seconds, man. 